of my fingernails. It's a gene. And there are genes, sets of instructions, for telling the body how to assemble all the things it's made of. These include things you can see, like the pigment that used to make my hair black, and things you can't see, like the enzymes that allow me to digest my morning breakfast. Until just a few years ago, all the information contained in the human DNA archive was secret. Its code was indecipherable. But today, it's being read page after page after page. But in order to understand how DNA does its work, you need to be familiar with its structure. As you watch the next sequence on the structure of DNA, think about what sort of molecule it is. Here's a schematic model of DNA. Unwind the double helix and it consists of two long strands that form a ladder-like structure. The strands of DNA are strings of chemically repeating units which act as basic building blocks. Each unit contains a sugar, deoxyribose, a phosphate group and a base. Together, these form a nucleotide. There are actually four types of base. Adenine, thymine, cytosine and guanine. Within a strand of DNA, the bases can come in any order and just how important this sequence is will become clear later. What's more, in double-stranded DNA, the bases match up in a particular fashion. Adenine always pairs up with thymine and guanine with cytosine. This precise base pairing means that the base sequence in one strand is complementary to the sequence in the other. The base pairs are held together by relatively weak hydrogen bonds. But when summed up over the whole DNA double helix, these hydrogen bonds impart great stability. Hopefully you'll have noticed that the DNA double helix molecule is in fact a polymer, a large molecule made up of small units linked together. In nucleic acids, the basic unit is a nucleotide. A large number of nucleotides link together by condensation to produce a polynucleotide strand. There are two nucleic acids, DNA and RNA, which we will look at later in the program. The best way to think about DNA is that it's, it's a polymer, a linear molecule made up of basic building blocks. And the type of building block and the order in which those types occur encodes information rather like a sentence, um, you know, I sat on the mat, for example, is uh, encoded in that sequence of letters is a message, and encoded in DNA is of course also a message, depending on the sequence of nucleotides that make up the DNA. You can change that message um, so it means something quite different, like I sat on the mat, if we change it to I sat on the cat, we have a completely different message. Um, but just by changing one element within that. Use mnemonics to remember difficult things. I often have difficulty remembering the base pairs in DNA until I made a little rhyme which is Cabris goodies are tasty. That is Cabris for C is linked with goodies, guanine, R for A for adenine, tasty for T for thymine. Whatever you can do, just try and make ways of remembering it. There's more material about genes and DNA on the Guru website, as well as interactive exercises to test those grey cells. So take a break and log on. Now for one of our exam style questions, which will give you practice in organising what you've learnt and checking that you really understand it. You'll get some help with the question in the interview which follows. But first, have a go at answering it yourself. What is a gene? Think it's easy? Think again. A gene has been defined in a number of different ways. It is the unit of heredity 
but unfortunately there are various different ways in which you can break heredity down and it isn't obvious which one we should use. The most common conventional definition of a gene is that length of DNA which codes for one polypeptide chain, one protein chain. DNA is the chemical basis of the gene and it's only been known how it works since 1953. Before that, however, we knew quite a lot about genes from the work of Mendel in the 19th century and his successors in the early 20th century who studied pedigrees and showed that heredity is particulate. Before Mendel came along, it had been thought that male and female, father and mother, blended their effects rather like you might blend two pots of paint, sort of red paint from the mother and blue paint from the father, and you tip them together and you make purple paint. But as it is, and as Mendel showed, when you mix the two parents, what you get is just as much variation as you ever had before. So Mendel showed that each parent contributes particles of heredity, like beads, like indivisible units. These particles are genes. They move through the body to the next generation without blending, without mixing. They're not like red paint and blue paint. They're like beads.